us floating through space. That's what we're doing here, right? And uh, yeah, I'm interested in this business, space. Not us. I don't care about us. Uh, and so, you know, I study the Big Bang, the thing that gets you farthest from all of us. The creation, the great thing. Um, but, jokes aside, doing this because your tax credit dollars helps people like me go to Antarctica, wear a goofy dress, stand in front of a telescope, take this picture, and tell you what I, what I did with your money. Okay. So, before any science, I want to do a fun experiment with you. Audience participation, that's what we call it. Um, and uh, so this experiment will be about the Big Bang. So, uh, anyone want to shout out what you think about, what you think Big Bang? Like, What's going on? Creation of the universe. Okay. Crashing into each other. Ah, okay. Both will be. I will connect these dots. <laughs> <laughs> this will happen. Mm -hmm. But before we go to the science, I want to do a thought experiment because it's easy. It doesn't take any money, and you know, you're all smart people. <laughs> so, all right. So here's a very simple experiment. So I have two uh, grids up here. So this guy, A in green and B in pink. If you're colorblind, I apologize. I don't know what it looks like, but. The point is that B, this, this pink grid, is just a stretched out version of the green A grid. And I want to po uh, pose these questions that if you imagine that A, the small grid, expanded into B, the big grid, then from your perspective, is there a center or a core to this expansion? Like, you know, it's expanding from somewhere. And the second question, which is a little more detailed, is, is there a symmetry to this expansion? Does everything move the same way? What do you think? Let's start with the first one. Is there a center? We have a big grid here. Okay, like imagine big grid. I have only Middle dot. What? Middle dot. Middle dot. That's a good guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're called center. We can connect with the word middle. Is it infinite? Yeah. Is it no? Ooh, <laughs> and how about the nature of the expansion? Will all the dots move the same way, or what do you think? No. 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 Yes. All right. We'll hold on. Back. <laughs> Is it flat? It's flat. It's flat. So it's flat or dancing? It's flat and infinite. <laughs> like my dreams. That's what I'm sure. Okay, that's technically correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's the experiment. Uh, I take the small grid, I put it on the big grid, and what you see is no matter where you align two dots, that point marked with the white X's appears to be the center. And there's no true center to this whole picture. It's an apparent center. So I had a hard time making this diagram because when I went to university, the professor did this with transparencies. Old people use this for oh. part one. <laughs> and it blew my mind, right? I'm in a PhD class, I'm a 21-year-old beer-drinking man, and I was like, holy shit, what's going on? And suddenly it connected. Like All the stuff I heard in you know, physics class made sense. And hopefully it will to you in two minutes. <laughs> um, and, and that's the you know that's the the profound statement here is that there is no true center, no matter where you align. But also, given that alignment point, wherever that you have done, the things that are farther away are moving faster. You see, like the things that are outer, more outer, they are moving more apparently than the guys who are inside. So with time, if this was continued to expand, it would appear the things that are farther are moving faster. I did no physics so far. This is arts and crafts. <laughs> so here's the physics, and this is where it really connects like in my head, and that's when I went, holy shit, is Edwin Hubble, who came from Chicago, like I did, hey, uh, and he came here and used the Mount Wilson Observatory to measure the speed at which stars are moving away from us, Earth, the apparent center. And we measured this, he saw that stars that are farther away are moving faster. And Einstein, on the other side, had predicted this using his theory of space-time, or general relativity. That grid was just a cartoon of space-time, that's it. And therefore, from theory and experiment, this is the conclusion we have, is that the universe is expanding, and we are just here, and from our perspective, it looks like the center, but there is no true center. So this is the Big Bang. That's it, now you know it. <laughs> My professional skills are not at work. But the real cool part about this is there is no true center, so there is no core to the Big Bang. There is no you know, point where all this happened. It happened everywhere, no matter where you were. And that's a profound statement to appreciate. It takes time and a few drinks. <laughs> All right, so tying it to more real science. Uh, so if I draw a cartoon of this, well, I didn't, someone on the internet did, I saw it. Um, so if we are here today, and these are like four galaxies, you know, they're chilling. 
if we now think ahead in time when the universe is expanding, the space between them is you know, bigger, so they're spreading out. But if you imagine going back in time, so that's what this is supposed to mimic, then the things are coming close together. It's an apparent coming close together because backwards in time, expansion is contraction. And if you go far back enough, things are so close that there's a lot of friction. Someone said friction. You know, <laughs> things, are, things are running into each other, and it's very hot. And this is where SpongeBob is in place. <laughs> and then in the near future, we are kind of living there. You have this cold, isolated space, like Squidward, stuck. You can do nothing. You can go nowhere. Um, and the, and the, there's a side set of all of this is that in the early universe, where it's so hot and dense, the light cannot travel freely because everything's scattering. It's just like you cannot see through flames. And in the cold future universe, or today, light can travel. This is why you can see each other. And so this is a, you know, an effect of the Big Bang, given we have electrons, protons, and light. So it's a prediction, in some sense, that the transparency of the universe will change. So, recapping. The universe is expanding. There's no true center. And in an expanding universe, if you go backwards and imagine what all of us particles were doing, we were scattering across and creating a lot of heat, and the photons could not travel. Therefore, there was a point where the universe went from opaque to transparent, where it was just cold enough that you can form atoms. Electrons and protons find each other and snap into atoms, or hydrogen, and the light can travel freely. So this is the recap summary of it. This is, this is practical. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> More equations. All right, so now we can talk about real science. So I'm kind of like dragging my feet here because this is a subtle concept before a really complicated picture comes up. No apologies, science is hard. <laughs> um, so this is the same picture. All I'm saying is, again, early universe, it's very hot and dense. The light particles are scattering with electrons, protons, they can't go anywhere. And there is this threshold of transparency, a point in time where everywhere in space, it is expanded and cooled just enough that stable atoms can form and light can free stream. And that is what this cartoon is showing, again, stolen from the internet, no credit given. <laughs> so the yellow zooming particles are light. They're just like, they were trapped and now they're free and they're zooming ahead. Okay? Make sense? All right, before I go to the next slide, do we all agree speed of light is constant? Is there any debate? Sure. Okay. Yes. okay. This is Einstein said, come on. <laughs> Keep that in mind, because the next slide is important. Because if speed of light is constant, that means if I wait for some time, in, and that's the constant speed, I will have measured some distance, right? Velocity multiplied by time is distance. And if you take that equation and that statement in your head and just you know, think about it, this is what uh, the cartoon you will draw from that picture I have, uh, or I will draw. Anyway, so the point is that because light has a constant speed, as I'm looking back into the universe, it's like a time machine, I'm looking in the past. Because the light took some time to get to here. And at some point, I'm looking so far back in time that the universe was this hot, dense, opaque stuff. Therefore, there is this sort of sphere of transparency beyond which it's opaque and hot. And there's a limit to what we can see as a result, given by the speed of light and duration we have had to be alive. So, because of this, you can expect from the Big Bang Theory, this is theory, this is all math talk, no science yet. Uh, math is science, okay. Uh, there's, this, there's this shell that we should be seeing if Big Bang is true, and the electrons, protons, and photons are true. The latter is true because we're standing here. You can make coffee, come on. So, <laughs> so, okay, so we expect this shell, but do we see it? And the answer is yes. And this is no longer stolen internet graphics, there's a credit. This is people at NASA using telescopes, measuring stuff. And we have measured the shell of light. This is, of course, the Earth I dropped just from somewhere. It's not to scale. It's 30 million light years that Earth would be a tiny dot up there. But nonetheless, we have measured a limit, a shell of light. And the, the, color of, the temperature of this light is about 100 that temperature of room temperature. So room temperature in science speak is 300 Kelvin, whatever Fahrenheit. And then you divide that by 100, that's roughly the temperature we see. However, there is some unevenness. And all this graphic is showing is the unevenness. It would be boring to show you a sphere of color red. You know, that's kind of boring. So we take away the constant stuff and we show you the unevenness. And the unevenness is one part in a million. And so it's very, very smooth. Like if you could run your fingers on top of this, yeah, you won't burn your fingers. But anyway, 
it would feel very smooth. Can we and actually see the light? Yes. So we have designed telescopes for the last three years with which we can literally see this light. Um, its color is slightly different, but whatever. So we have seen this light. People have gotten their Nobel Prizes. Why am I still employed? It is not for the free pair I get here. Uh, and the reason is there's a lot of questions that we need to answer now that we have seen this light. And repeatedly, mind you, there have been four telescope missions that have confirmed seeing it. Um, so questions are, uh, why is it so smooth? Why is it smooth to one part in a million? Why is the texture the way it is? So, you know, why is it not any coarser or any finer? Or is there polarization? So if you take the equivalent of polarized sunglasses and look at it, would it look the same? This is just the raw light. Um, and, 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 you know, more subtle questions like, is this pattern fractal? So if I keep zooming in, would the red and blue stuff look similar? And of course, there's the you know taxpayer question: Can you use this for any good? <laughs> uh, but these are questions, and this is why people are employed. Uh, I, you know. Well, there are many different groups trying to answer many of these questions. Uh, we have a more subtle question that we're trying to get at with this light. But nonetheless, this is what we use to see the light. This is your money. <laughs> My, it's recently mine because I came from India. I didn't pay taxes for a while. Uh, so these are telescopes. Uh, that are in Antarctica, that's where I work. And there are telescopes that keep measuring this light. They're all like 10 years old at this point. They're renovated every few years. And this is my last slide showing renovation or building telescopes here in Pasadena and then sending it off to Antarctica with a bunch of crazy kids. <laughs> and hopefully we'll measure this light better to one part in a billion and get to answer questions about the texture and the color and all of it. That's it. Thank you. Mm.